You all, I am in the Word again. I have to be in the Word uh, because if I'm not in the Word, then I'm going to be coming up with stuff out of my head, and I and it would just be my word against your word or my word, my word against the Word of God. Um, so today is an interesting show because of, we've done several tithing shows down through the years, but this week was tithing week at the time of this recording. It is the uh, beginning, kind of, first week of, second week of J- July. And uh, t- down through the years, y'all, you've been t- tuned into the Sir Walter Jones Show, you know my take on tithing. I've been very dogmatic on that. I'm not so dogmatic on tongues. I'm not a c- cessationist, per se. So I let y'all do what you do. I don't bother you that much. I just don't want you pushing that stuff on me and my children. Tithing, though, I'm extremely dogmatic on it. Tithing, if you feel like it. It's your money. Do whatever you want to do. Like A.G. Wentworth. I need cash now. Okay, do whatever you want to do with that money. That's yours. Okay, you need a structured settlement and you need cash now. (laughs) Pay it. Stop coming over on my fence jumping my fence and coming on to my grass and stuffing on my grass and tell me what I need to do with my grass. That's the problem we have, especially when it is taught incorrect. Today we're doing a case study and we're going to use Bishop Ivy Hilliard as a case study to show you all the type of teaching I'm using him because he is a prominent man in the gospel. He's have a lot of sons in the ministry. I have not watched the video at all. It's an hour long, but we'll see if we even need to play the whole hour because if we see that they're repeating, then we'll stop it and we'll end the show. But I can almost guarantee you what's going to happen. I can guarantee you that you're going to hear the word principle a few times. I can almost bet my house (laughs) on the word principle. Now, I'm aware of Hilliard's teaching on tithing, and so he's not as dogmatic with the curse part. I do know that without watching this, what we're getting ready to play. So he is not for the cursing part. I do know that about him, and I appreciate that about him. So you won't see Malachi 3 abused, probably, I'm hoping, in this particular show that I'm about to play. Teaching, whatever you want to call it, right? But before I play the video, I would like to say that there is an easy way to check the facts. It's really easy. And I'll show you in two places in the Bible. It's really right there for those who are trying to make you tied under the law. It's easy to check that out. When it gets to the custom, well, we got to go through this video to see what's going on. I'll see you in 60. you thinking and where the topics are hot feel free to comment whether we agree or not cause he's got something to say sir walter jones sir walter jones he's got something to say sir walter jones sir walter jones show Come on in. The water's fine. Do yeah. oh. mm. hello everybody, so Walter, so Walter Jones show. I'm he. It is the evening edition, baby. Mm. 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 Come on in, the water's fine, the water's fine. Good to see all you bunkers out there. Deborah, Michelle, and and uh, per- perfect. Uh, that's Carol, y'all. Uh, a whole bunch of y'all out here. Derek and Marlon McDaniels. Blessed to you, sir. Ryan Pringle. Whole lot of y'all here. All right. Um, 
I like to look in the Bible right quick before we hit the play. And I, I, one thing that I did forget was my uh, apple. I'm sorry, my drink. Uh, sparkling grape juice. I was going to drink to this show uh, and I was going to eat some popcorn, but it would be difficult to uh, narrate with popcorn. But I sure was getting ready to do a little drink it, drink it. So I want y'all to see something at the beginning here with uh, Genesis. Ch I don't know, chapter 7. I want to show you the vernacular of King James and then try and figure out how are these teachers uh, teaching the way they are when there was a consistency throughout the 1611 language. It's an old Norse. We call it Shakespearean. 1600. And we don't really have the original King James, none of you have the original King James of 1611. None of you. All of you have the 1700 version. Some of you have the 1800 version, okay? So let's stick with the 1700 version. The language here is consistent throughout the Old Testament. Yet, when y'all get to Malachi, you changed the meaning. See, it's easy to check certain things. You can be very prolific, very intelligent, very wise, very smart in so many things. But one thing in your life could be so jacked up. It's amazing. And this is what we see in pastors, and preachers and elders today, ministers today. So well equipped and very well versed and the plethora of things throughout their life. But that one thing, they can't get that one thing right. That could be with their flesh, drinking problem, drug problem. How many times have we seen great men fall from grace? Well, no such thing, but you know what I mean, just fall who was really admired by so many people around the world, but they fall, fell because of that one little struggle. I see that happening with the church with the sense of illiteracy. You could be so great and be wealthy and get to the Bible and this one thing you hold on to. That is almost like a mental illness in a sense to see something or see it used throughout the scriptures, and then when you see it again, you change the meaning because you need it to say what you've been taught. You have been engineered to walk like an Egyptian. You are a robot to that one thing. You say you are your own man, you have your own mind, and you have your own heart, and until you get to that one thing, and you show that you've been engineered. Look at this. This is the ark. Noah's ark. This is Genesis chapter 7. We know the story. It's the gather the beasts, fowls, and all that good stuff. Now check the language because I'm using King James. All right. When you keep going, let me get rid of, when you, when you keep going, uh, You'll see Noah was 600 years. Wait, hold on. For yet seven days and I will cause it to rain upon the earth. That was a clue. 40 days and 40 nights. Every living substance that I have made will I destroy. Noah was 600 years old. Now water keeps showing up here. Here. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife. They went in. Because the waters, again, of clean beasts. He, he gathered up the, the beasts and what have you. Then went in two. And it came to pass after seven days, the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Right here. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, 
the, sa the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Was that a financial blessing? Hmm. Was that some kind of spiritual blessing? Hmm. Because the next line says, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Why? Because the windows of heaven were open. Everybody understand what that means, right? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. You do. The footnote says the flood became as the fountains of the great deep were broken. Worldwide undersea earthquakes and volcanic volcanic eruptions occurred almost simultaneously, throwing massive ocean waves surging back and forth across the earth. You have visuals here. You can see it. This may also refer to the cataclysm that created the continents separating and spreading these giant land masses from the original land. All right. Then in eight, it looks like it says it again. God made a wind to pass over the earth, the waters, the fountains also the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. Oh, first the windows of heaven was open. Then the, so did God stop the blessing? Did God stop a financial blessing? Hmm? And the rain from heaven was restrained. Wow. Okay. So looking at it that way, you can see that the windows of heaven opening up has nothing to do with anything spiritual. It is literal, right? Y'all got it. Well, when you turn to Malachi chapter 3, all of a sudden the language and the meaning the whole etymology got thrown out. This is the great divide. So instead of going to Malachi chapter 3, you start at Malachi chapter 2 and you see who he's talking about. And now, oh priest, this commandment is for you. Priest. He wasn't talking about the people. He's talking to the priests. Start at chapter 2, and then it continues. It goes on because if you notice, chapter 3 don't even, I mean, it's like it continues in here. Usually these, these have like a subtopic uh, above it, but it, it uh, 2 leaked into 3. <laughs> okay, they put a subtopic up here, let you know that God's getting ready to judge, but it leaked. That means the pericope continued. But when you get over here, look at the language. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Notice how my Bible keep putting uh, letters next to certain words. I wonder why. That there might be, and here's a way to check people's work. You know how to spell, right? There's two ways to spell meat. You know what that means, right? The number one even tell you what that is. Let's see what it tells you. It's right over there. It tells you that it's meat. That's food. Hmm. Prove me now. Herewith. Says the Lord of hosts. If I will open you window. It even have a seed next to it like Genesis did. Windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Mm. That's the word that crossed the folk. That's the word that got people screwed up right there. Windows of heaven pour you out a blessing that there will be no, no room. There shall not be room enough to receive it. And there's a devourer. Well, I got news for you all. I'm reading out of the Kojic Bible. <laughs> okay. I want y'all to see this. <laughs> because it's funny to me. <laughs> Let me show y'all something. I want y'all to, <laughs> to see this. 
This is the Kojic Bible. That's the seal. The Church of God in Christ. Oh, you can't join in. You gotta be born in. This is the Church of... Okay, many elders and ministers and pastors have this Bible. Even though it was printed by the Spirit Field Life Bible, that's their Bible. But Kojic put their stamp of approval on this Bible. All right, y'all still with me? So let me read in the footnotes. It looks like the bishops of the Church of God in Christ forgot to read the footnotes. <laughs> oh. Now this is the manual of the Church of God in Christ. And in the manual, uh, there, there's some things in here that it's telling us to do. There's certain ordinances in here that that that's that's kind of suspicious. <laughs> it's kind of suspicious. Mm. There's some stuff in here, y'all. One of these days, I'm gonna go through it and I and, and show y'all. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Tongo. All right. So let me show y'all the footnote. In the Kojic Bible. And y'all tell me if there's something strange going on. All right, let's find it. And then we'll play this great movie. <laughs> right here. These verses teach the following principles. See that word? Israel was neglecting her covenant relationship with God by robbing him of tithes and offerings. That's true. Number two. Her neglect brought retribute, uh, ret retributive judgment. True. God challenged her to counter her neglect by proving his faithfulness in this manner of giving. Uh -huh. If she would give all the tithe, he would open the windows of heaven. Uh-oh. Send the needed rain. Come on, Koji. Did you not see that? And rebuke the devourer. Uh-oh. Destroy the locusts and... Uh, that devoured the crops. Wow. Although there is no consensus in the contemporary church as to the New Testament application or ap applicability of the principle of tithing, no consensus, of testing God financially, of God's promise rebuking of those things that devour finances, no consensus. Or of God's pro providing financially for those who faithfully give. There is general agreement though. General agreement though that the New Testament teaches us to give substantially to the Lord. Notice that. There is no consensus in the contemporary church as the New Testament. That's applying this to finances what they're saying here. It is also agreed that he is a God who delights to respond with gracious provision, especially to meet essential needs. Matthew. Mm. Oh, man. That's in the Kojic Bible. Kojic. Kojic. And so... Again, probably you're going to see these men say that they're not for that whole uh, curse for the curse stuff. Fine. Let's practice the customs prior to the law. No problem. I got the just the right book for you right here. Y'all seen this book, Manners and Customs of Bible Land. Mm. When you open it up. You're going to see a whole bunch of customs in here that no tithe paying by the custom of tithe paying follow. You won't see it. House of more than one person, foods and their preparation, customs of mealtime. I mean, there's some stuff in here that you'd be like, why aren't y'all practicing that? Special suppers and banquets, the sacred duty of hospitality, please. <laughs> you can forget that. Daily program of activities, dress and ornamentation. Mm. Parental position in the home. Mm. 
birth and care of children, education of youth, religion in the home, marriage customs. You could forget that. Y'all lying. I mean, it, it goes on. Sickness in the body. Y'all for, y'all can forget that. None of you. I went through all of these and I realized that y'all do not follow these customs. You don't. But one. <laughs> but one. Tithe. Why? Because you have to, that cognitive business must be explained. It must be explained. So you got to go to Abraham or Abram because he paid a tenth to, he gave a tenth to Melchizedek. The problem is we only see Abraham doing it once. We never see him doing it over and over again. It was Abram when he did it. God changed his name and then we didn't see him pay a tithe again and Abram lived a long, good life. We didn't see it again. <laughs> and then they're going to go probably to Jacob. They're going to go to the, the Mr. Levi paying a tithe while he was still in the in, in the seed of Abraham. Oh, they're going to they're going to go. I'm sure they are. I've heard them all. I've heard them all. So let's watch this wonderful uh, this wonderful movie of the week. Y'all welcome to the Sir Walter Jones show theaters. The movie of the week is uh, I, I, uh, from uh, I don't know what state this is, but the players. Well, I'll show you who the players are. Let's let's set up the movie. Uh, go ahead and use the bathroom if you can. If you can, mm -hmm. if you need to use the restroom, uh, go ahead. All right. Let's see. Uh, the players here is Bishop uh, William Murphy the third, uh, Bishop uh, Rudy McKissick Jr., and Pastor Y. P. J. Miller, and Apostle I. V. Hilliard is the host of this tithing controversy. Okay, uh, sit down and relax yourselves. And enjoy the movie. <laughs> I'll be moderating throughout the process. And if it gets too jacked up, I'm going to have to stop the whole thing and go <laughs> and puke. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and puke. All right, it's rolling. Hopefully the music will come on in and all that good stuff. Welcome to the Apostles Conversation. You have just entered the riveting room of revelation with Apostle I.V. Hilliard and his special guests. Get ready for an electrifying, exhilarating, and empowering experience that will be life-changing. This will be a candid conversation like none other. And now, presenting Apostle I.V. Hilliard. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our conversation tonight. And uh, tonight we're going to have our, our guys come on, and uh, we have a few technical difficulties, but we're going to work through them. All right, the conversation tonight is on the tithing controversy, and I'm sure something will be said that will be a blessing to you. Amen. And amen. So let me bring our guest on. I've, I've got uh, 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 Bishop uh, McKissick. He's, uh, he's, I think he's in, uh, he's in Dallas, Texas. He's got McKissick. to preach in the morning. Okay. He's in Dallas, Texas, and the hotel there is having Wi-Fi problems. But hey, we will not, <laughs> we will not, not be denied. I have him on my phone, so he's going to be chiming in on the phone. Bishop, how are you? Hey, Dad, I'm right here. How are you doing? Everybody, y'all can't see my face. Y'all hear my voice. But <laughs> prayerfully, before it's over, y'all will see me. All right, all right. Bring the other two guests in, our two uh, conversationalists. Uh, there is um, <laughs> William Murphy, a man, and uh, then there is YPJ. How's everybody? Hey, Dad. Doing? Peace, peace. Yes. How's everybody? Dad, I'm doing good. You know, I'm I'm uh tomorrow night I'm uh at the House of Blues in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's an early release of Worship and Justice. So this whole week is Worship and Justice everything. I'm gonna be in New Orleans this Sunday night. Um I don't even know why I'm talking about it. It's already sold out. There are no more seats. Uh it's at the House of Blues. So mm -hmm. that's really exciting. But on Tuesday night, Dad, I'm going to be uh, doing some music for the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, which I'm a part of. 
Okay. And uh, that meeting starts Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in New Orleans, and then Sunday, all day Sunday. What's this advertisement? <laughs> Why are you advertising? It's all about worship and justice all day. We just gonna worship God. All he didn't day. bring you on for that, William. About this William, music, about this music that God gave me. I was, uh, I went to uh, celebrate my grandmother's life, Dad, on this Friday, yeah. and uh, one of the mothers from my dad's church. I sent her one of the songs from the record called The Just Shall Live, the song that I played for you and mom. Right. And, I need uh, to fast forward this. The la my last two <laughs> records, God's given me a song f that I got from your teaching. And Tithing. this was one of them, The Just Shall Live by Faith. Tithing. And she was in the hospital. And as she started to listen to the song, her body started responding. And that's why God gave me that song. I'm so excited about it. And uh, all this week, it's all about worship and justice. So Amen. praise God. Amen. Yes, sir. My P, my P, talk to us. What's happening in Indiana? You're not selling well, that. First name. of all, Bishop Murphy, I'm excited about the album. I know it's going to be a blessing. I'm in agreement with you for these Grammys, man. It's time mm. for you to get these Grammys, man. So, man, thank you, man. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is good, Apostle. I'm just over here building, doing Dealing with electricians and plumbers and all this other stuff. It's not oh, fun, but it's, we getting it. So, okay. My hat's off to you. My hat's off to you. Our numbers are going through the roof. I think they're ready for us to get into yes. the conversation. But uh, Prophesy, hey, uh, sir. Bishop Rudy, what's happening? We always do this for those who may be watching the first time. We, uh, Let me fast uh, forward. Uh, but for what I've heard from those who've read, that the majority, the great majority of the comments have been supportive of our position. Okay. Our position is a position really that is scriptural. And so tonight that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about this controversy. Yes, Denise, I, I, believe I know that, that video. If you have not, yes, sir. Yes, Denise, I know the video of him speaking by himself. That was a couple of days ago. So I already know his take on it. I want to hear these other brothers' take. Your microphone, can you just lift it a little bit because it's going in and out? Of, the people need to hear you. Okay, thank you. Is that better? Yeah, when I get ready. Yeah, well, thank you. I said the uh, the uh, my my response was um, in answer to the uh, group of pastors. I have several hundred pastors that I talk to monthly, and uh, on our power talk, and uh, I wanted to address it. Uh, it's biblical. It's scriptural. And uh, as I said, it has gone viral. I don't want to be too repetitive, but if they were to hear and hearing me, I want to make sure that's the case. That everybody hears that because it is a blessed <laughs> principle. Y'all wrong. <laughs> and I wanted to bring clarity to it. Uh, not trying to be combative, just want to be clear. Amen. Me too. Not combative, but just clear. Good. And I've got I've gotten a great response from the body of Christ. Great response. Yeah, I know why. Wow. Who's next? You, okay, tonight, my turn. Gentlemen, oh, the floor is open. I, I, Let's I, have this <laughs> conversation on oh, tithing. I thought they saw me. I was going to speak. It was quiet. I think uh, for me, this has been a challenging week because, as stated, uh, <clears throat> there is a great deal of confidence in many of our faith teachers, you being one of the most sound voices in the kingdom of God. I'm certain of that, um, um, as well as the other voices that have been sound. So a lot of people have been, I would say, unfortunately, confused. And so I think there's a great deal of appreciation of your perspective because there was, I feel, a great deal of soundness with it, but as well, it wasn't combative. And I, before we even get into it, Apostle, I think one of the things that you're teaching- It wasn't combative because he was preaching by himself. There were nobody in the room. He did that by himself. Of course it wasn't combative. Thing us ...is that you don't have to agree with the person, but you don't have to be combative. You can share what you believe and make it clear and what I've been seeing, unfortunately, is a lot of arguing going on with pastors, with leaders that may have different views. Can you just minister to that for a moment? Because the last thing we need is a lot of contention amongst leadership on how you address a point the way that you do without being combative. Good, sir. I like that. Well, I think you just you, you address it scripturally. People are going to hear what they want to hear. Yes, familiar, because yeah. people uh bible call it itching ears they are looking for whatever supports their perspective so yes, the way sir. you do it is you just be biblical and uh you let the scripture speak for itself yes i agree and on this issue it is the will of god yes sir 
See, it is the will of God for the believer to, to tithe, to honor him. Oh, wait, hold on. As source and sustainer of our lives. Wait. And honor him with tithes and offerings. Wait, you said it's the will of God that we do this. So if it is his will, then we should do this. This, this is like a commandment in a sense. If you're saying this is his will, that this happens, this happens, that we should do it. Okay. Well, you say, well, how can you say that? What well, tithing, as we have stated, tithing was before the law. Oh, here it comes. Tithing was before the law. Right. Now, when the law of Moses is written, it is written so that we can get insight into the heart of God, the mm -hmm. mind of God. It explains what God wants. Hmm. Now, then, <clears throat> um, so tithing was incorporated into the law. And then, of course, we see tithing after the law. Jesus says, this ye ought to have done. Now, he could have done away with it, so you don't need tithing more. But that's not what he said. Right. In Hebrews, New Testament church, mm -hmm. Paul is the writer. And he says, we do not know if Paul is the writer of Hebrews. Their science has not lined up to that being him. So you can't be dogmatic that, that, that he is the author. He gives this illustration of how Abraham tithed into the high priest of his day, and so ought we tithe to the high priest of our day. Who's that? Jesus. Oh. It's crystal clear. And so I think the way you way you way you you don't get personal, you don't attack people personally, but what you do have to do, you have to be scriptural in what you say. Right. And so um uh, God's not the author of confusion. Uh, but 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 some of your teaching is uh, the book of Acts is a narrative book. Are we commanded to do everything from Acts chapter one all the way to the very end? Did the Holy Ghost come and came on those and 120 in the upper room? Do we now have to tear on the altar and, and ask the spirit to come again? Because it's in the Bible that they did that. So do we have to do it, too? I'm tying this to your tithing custom. He's not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think anything that we say that we cannot back up scripturally wow. will cause confusion. Mm -hmm. And so you just have to be prayerful when you're going to address something. And so, um, um, and and then of course, as as I you know in my in my in my presentation, I've been a tither. I started tithing when when I wouldn't my church wasn't even teaching tithing. Wow. I wasn't a pastor, so I didn't start tithing because I'm a pastor. I need everybody to tithe. I need to, I need to show them the way. No, I started tithing because when I read the scripture, I could see crystal clear that I am to honor God with a tithe, a matrix of 10% of my increase. Mm -hmm. Abraham did it. Joseph, uh, Jacob did it. Mm -hmm. I, and so I was to do that. Those men did a whole lot of other stuff as well. Um, they, their blood sacrifices was before the law. It too got implemented into many nations around the world. Pagan nations uh, uh, did blood sacrifices to their gods. So that the old, uh, even Moses' father did like did that before he. I mean, uh, uh, all this stuff was before the law. Uh, circumcision uh, was before the law. Uh, there was so much before the law. Why again are you exclusively picking the tithe? And with an expectation of God to bless me. Right. I did it with an expectation that God is going to bless me. And he did. So, you know, I'm like I said, I've never been at the mercy of any theological argument on it right. because I've proven it in my own life. Dad, I, I was, um, of course, you know, uh, I've got quite uh, quite a a few young folks in our church who are trying to understand, you know, the law of God and how they're supposed to live their lives. And so, of course, being here in Atlanta, you know, I got quite a few questions about it. And I was excited to see one of my daughters uh, post something on social media that said, I don't care what y'all say, I'm paying my tithes because people understand that you know, old school Baptists used to say, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. <laughs> yeah, you know, you. Right. this is something that you can't, you can't make me 
doubt this because I heard you say this, it's too late. I've already got the fruit of it. And so I think um, the core of the message, and, and I said this a few weeks ago, when the whole debate about Roe versus Wade and you know where the church should be and what our position should be on that. And my post was this, that Jesus always lovingly led people into righteous choices. That, that our conviction should always be to love people into it and not to scare people into it. And I think this whole idea of uh, tithing because you're afraid of what might happen if you don't is what needs to be done away with. Yes, but when the POTUS got rid of Roe versus Wade, you got upset about it, William Murphy. Uh, you 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 walked away from the tenets. <laughs> I mean, you know, abortion is killing a, a child. We're not even talking about your usual fighting over the, the 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 life of the mother or rape or incest. We're just talking about the regular, purposely just aborting a child because you don't want the child. You yourself, William Murphy, I heard you in your pulpit say that POTUS did a bad thing. It's this so it's difficult to hear you teach on tithing because I I know that um that you're not cold or you uh you're not even hot. When I want my tea hot, I want it hot. If it starts losing its hotness, I don't like it. So I put it back in, in the microwave and make it as hot as possible. I want it to burn my tongue. That's the way I like my tea. The more warm it gets, the more I hate it. But I want my pure leaf to be ice cold right now. It's almost solid. There's some liquid there, but the bottom is solid. I like it for I like for it to not to be total liquid because I won't like it because I consider it lukewarm. I am representing God as it pertains to some of your teachings. I'd rather you be extremely hot like my tea or extremely cold like my pure leaf. But because you are lukewarm on the, the this issue with tithing and um, abortion, I, I spew you. That, you know, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, and then I'll you'll be cursed with a curse. I think that's the part that kind of keeps people in this place where they're tithing because they're afraid no. instead of tithing because they believe. Can you just kind of clarify because we church we always trying to scare people into doing the right thing and it's it's never worked <laughs> so well, i think you 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 just said it yourself it's it's a it, it's it should not be a scare tactic right according to galatians christ has redeemed us from all the curses of the law good so I uh, brothers Abraham, i agree um did not tithe because he was afraid good Right, as a, as a as a as a as a step of honor, mm -hmm. and wow. you know that's that's the correct motivation. All right now, and you know I'm looking at the thread, seeing you know, um, but I'm, and this is not like I said, this is just to bring clarity, and so I'm not. I mean, my whole point is, as I said in my in my my my, my commentary, this this is a matter of conscience. What right. you gonna choose to believe? Mm -hmm. What you gonna choose to believe? Wow! Can you not tithe and go to heaven? Yes, you can. Absolutely. You can. You gonna go. You gonna go straight to heaven. Okay. So, All right. That's bold. That's that's deep. What he just said there. Can you not tithe and go to heaven? Yes. All right. Hey, Hillard, I might join your church. <laughs> okay. I'm with you right here. If you if you stay right here. If you stay right here, I just might support you. You don't have to tie and you will get to heaven. Okay. Please don't mess this up for me. <laughs> don't mess this up. It's it's a matter of whether you can see and believe this biblical principle. Ah, uh, 
There's the word. <laughs> there is the word. There is the word. Principle. Please do not tie principle to salvation because many of your followers have done that. Many of your sons in the gospel, Dad, Hillard, keep telling me that it's a principle, but it's tied to your righteousness, which is tied to my salvation, which means Jesus dying on the cross did nothing for me until I tithe. Please don't do that, Hillard. Please. I got faith in you, my Muslim brother. <laughs> and act on it and get the results. Wow. But not out of fear. Yeah, and, and it has been true. Pastors have taught it out of fear because they, they, they had not come into revelation that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And so they taught it out that way. And that's not the correct motivation. It's not. And so it needs to be taught that we honor God as yeah. source and sustainer of our lives. Proverbs yeah. um, chapter three says, we honor him with our substance. Substance. So I honor God with my substance. Good. As a result of my honoring God me with too. my substance, he promises to bless me. Okay. Yes. Now the blessings that are under the law have not been canceled, thank God. Okay. Thank God. So when I read the Old Testament and I read the blessings that are in the Old Testament for the righteous, oh, I, I'm able to claim those as well. But it's not about trying to be combative. You, a person can have their stand, fine. <laughs> I'm saying, you know, I, we, we, in the body of Christ, we got different stands on a whole lot of things. Got it? That's what one part about it. Christ don't believe in speaking in tongues. Another part of the problem. All right. Elder says, I, I think you have it all wrong. Tithing is a sacrifice. And there are two types of sacrifices. Non-blood and blood tithe is a non-blood and killing of, uh, of battles is blood. So in Hebrew 8, he disallowed the blood. And no, 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 no. I keep reading chapter seven to you all. Oh, let me continue, Sean. Let me continue. Oh, oh, about Christ death. I respect you. Oh, we don't have to fall out. That. Let me. I'm gonna put that in the favor. But, but my point is, what is my matter of conscience when I read the scripture? What is my matter of what is my my, my conscience when 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 I I get a comprehension and understanding a revelation from what the word of God says. And that is why we have teachers. That is why people should, you know, uh, go to a church that's going to teach them. And then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to gain a perspective. Yep. Yeah. I, I think apostle, one of the things that, because obviously I'm, I'm one of you, um, dealing with social media, you see a lot of attention and unfortunately, right. even in the comment section, there are those that don't understand how to voice their opinion without being disrespectful. But can you talk about the heart of the giver? Because a lot of people don't get it that, like you just said, this is about trust. It's about love. And right. when you don't want to give, you're not going to give. So I don't know why anybody, if you don't want to do something, you just ain't going to do it. So don't mix give with tithing, though, Pastor YPJ. And I see why his head was down. He's looking in the comment section. Um, so it looks like these young men are asking Hiller to teach us he already did that teaching i'm looking for you to both of you to uh murphy and and ypj and the other brother on the phone we, we're looking for your perspective as well don't let hillard's presence cause you all to veer <laughs> okay we heard his teaching on this all right and so don't get tithing mixed up with with a uh, mesh it with giving because tithing the way you all made it yes it is giving because that's the way y'all constructed it, even though tithing was always food in the Bible. So if you're going to make it money, fine. I'm not going to fight with y'all on that. But you can't make it a general statement by saying y'all don't want to give. The bunkers give. They give in a mighty way. The bunkers give thousands of dollars every year to people who need it. Do you understand? Don't misconstrue that giving factor to you 
pushing tithing and says, y'all don't want to do this and then call it giving. That is the manipulative move of the tongue. Why argue your point? But I think a lot of people miss the, the understanding. They think it's all about the preacher getting this and the preacher getting that. Right. As much as it's about the generosity that we are to utilize what we do. They don't know what you all do for the community, what we all do for the community, et cetera. But can you just talk about the heart of the giver for a moment so that people have a better understanding of what our heart posture should be? <clears throat> well, I, I, that is what Paul writes. See, Paul writes concerning the offerings. You know, the tithe is a matrix that set the tenth part. That's what it means, the tenth part. And God in the in the in the law explained that it was mandated. You follow me? Yes, I follow you. Uh, this, um, some of your names don't pop up. So when it says unknown user, um, I might know you. It's just that it doesn't pop up all the, for some reason. You know, it doesn't pop up. But a tithing is taught as a tax. All right. And it is understood in the scriptures as a as, by many as a tax. So they look at it as a tax. But tithing was uh, God telling the people to feed the Levites and the priests. So he did put an assessment on them. It is an automatic withdrawal in a sense. Uh, FICO withdrawal from your check. So it's like a tax. God says, take the 10th percent of your crop and you have to give it to the the tithe, the uh, priest and the levites and then after the third year you give it to the poor the widows and the strangers what have you so it is a type of tax all right uh today this tithing still continues to be taught as a tax and, and the law is saying bring it bring it to me if you don't it's your robber you follow me so he mandated it so that's set now when it comes to the offering often is a matter of the heart as a man purposes in his heart, so let him give. It's not talking about offering. This is not talking about tithe. This is talking about the offering. And then it goes on to say, I gradually on necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver. And so that is now really the chief motivation for my giving. I'm going to honor God with. Uh, but it was not a tax, it was an offering. Malachi says, don't rob me in tithe and offering. Tithe and offering. So was it offering, offering? <laughs> so I get what you're saying. Again, I wish your name popped up. Um, type your name <laughs> in a comment, will you please? Because I'm why is it saying unknown user? All right, no, it is it it was it was just like the temple had a tax. After this show is over, this their teaching, I'll show you the temple tax. That was money, and the food was a type of a tax. Mm -hmm. No, we he's we talking about under the law. Don't mix the two up. With 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 the tithe, but I'm honoring him also with an offering, and he leaves that to how I purpose in my heart. And when 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 I've gone through. Some challenging times, and I wanted to demonstrate to God, He's the source and sustainer of my life. You are who I'm depending on. Follow me. I'm motivated to give more. I'm mo I understand the part of sacrificial giving. Mm -hmm. So when I need God, I need to pay Him to help me. So with the same measure that you give, the same measure will come back to you, right? So if I give a tithe, are you saying that then? Maybe my my uh, cancer will leave my body. My body will be sick. Okay, or um, a, 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 some miraculous thing will happen where um, I, I don't know. We t we tend to tie tax. We we tend to tie the tithe to everything that God can do for us, and that right there is another type of dangerous teaching because we made God an extortionist. How is it that you're giving money so that God can heal you of, of something that, that's ailing you or your grandmother or something like that? When Jesus died on the cross, okay, prior to that, we see in the book of Isaiah, the scripture says uh, that uh, he was wounded for our transgression. All right. And it talks about the, he, the, the side, uh, the stripes, okay, the healing. So... 
by his stripes we are healed or by the tithe pain we are healed which one is it and so it's a matter of the heart but the heart now is 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 trained uh uh developed through the word of god wow. so as i hear the word of god i am now saying yes and i've i've committed myself to giving far beyond the tithe way yes. beyond the tithe yes way yeah. beyond the tithe. dad i was i was um i got a chance to i told you i was with my the storehouse is not the church uh, Peggy, the storehouse had never been the church. The storehouse wasn't even the temple back then. The storehouse were the Levitical cities where you stored the food. You didn't store. All, all. Can you imagine each, all of Israel taking their food and bringing it to the temple? Hear me. Can you imagine all of Israel who produced food from the ground, bringing it to the temple and bringing all that food in the temple? For just a couple of <laughs> a few Levites and priests, huh? What? How? How are they going to store it in the temple? Hmm. 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 That's a problem. My uh, family this week, and uh, going back to my granddad's church, the church that I grew up in, um, and so many people that uh, I saw. And it brought back so many memories. And I started thinking about people in that church who were so faithful and the families in that church who were so faithful. And yet that there might be meat in my house. You go to the refrigerator out where you store your food and bring it to the Levites and the priests. They are in the house so that the Levite and the priest might eat in God's house. Why? Because they did not have an inheritance. They did not have land. They didn't have a place where they went and they, they, you know, they tilled the ground. They didn't have an inheritance. God was their inheritance. So the Levitical cities stored the food. Those men worked in the temple so that there might be some meat there. That's what that is. It's that King James vernacular that messes us up. There were some people that I thought about who were present and served, but they struggled financially and amazing people, but, but never really had enough. And what puzzles me about this whole controversy of the tithe is that I could understand if everybody was tithing and everybody was still struggling. But I don't know one person who is a consistent. Titan was always food. That wine is food, uh, unknown user. Oil is food as well, <laughs> depending on what type of oil you're talking about. Are you talking about olive oil? And sometimes it did include money. It never did. Show me where the money was and, and, I'll, and I'll apologize to you if you can give me scripture what tithing was money faithful tither who has money problems i don't i don't know one did you hear that he says he don't know a faithful tither who's got money problems holy cow this we're 22 minutes in and that is the worst that i've heard yet everybody that it, the average person who borrow money from me are tithe payers. Tithe payers lost their homes during the 2006 uh, financial messology with the whole, the housing bubble. Tithe payers got their cars repoed. Ask me how I know. They were calling me, asking me to give them a bailout. Tithe payers went to the government for PPP loans. The churches went to the government. A tithe receiving agent went to the government for PPP loans and all the kind of loans to get bailed out. The churches did that. So William Murphy said one of the most craziest, I'm trying to be as respectable as possible because I almost said another word. That is the craziest thing you can ever say that you've never seen a, a, a person who was faithful to tithe and have money problems. Do you, if you go down there to the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the chapter seven, in the chapter 13 place, 
but people are filing for bankruptcy, you go and send that line and ask them, hey, you need your taxpayers? They'd be like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you follow, ask these people, where your, where your church at? <laughs> so many of these people are tithe payers. Bless him. Thank you, Nathan Grant, for the, for the super chat. He said a, an egregious thing right there. Because if that was the issue, why is it that we having so many problems in our churches today? Why is it that you got to w w work so hard and, and uh, do 30 minute offering times if the if all these tithe payers didn't have no money issues, then y'all's mortgages would get paid off like that. And so this I don't understand how there's even controversy around. You made it controversy. Everybody who's done it. Is is blessed beyond measure. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the people who have not done it and look at healer's face are the ones who always struggle financially that is a bold I, faith lie i haven't tithed in almost 20 years and i'm not i'm not suffering financially i can't believe that came out of whim who told me to wash this mess <laughs> jesus i see why you are upset with scotus <laughs> jesus i just i don't understand where the controversy is and so uh, even as we move into this new dispensation of grace i just need somebody to show me a tither who isn't blessed oh my god i can show you well, 15 of them <laughs> i could call the 15 last people who borrowed money from me are tithers you i'm gonna I'm give me your number william murphy they're gonna text you tonight uh and, and my root is mighty quiet Rudy, are you still there? <laughs> I, I can't hillard could not really respond to that. I hope he do, but he didn't. Hear any of their comments? <laughs> so, but hold on, I'm, 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 trying, I'm about to try to use my hot spot. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I thought you didn't have one. I would have told you to do that. <laughs> so I'm getting, I'm okay. I'm getting, I'm getting ready. Come on. All right. Good. Uh, Murph, let me let me let me make a comment to the, to you on that. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, all right, hold on, y'all. Hold, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, I may have to drink. I may have to take a drink, Bishop. I was waiting on this. This this is gonna be quite interesting. Y'all seen this before? I haven't. So this is it. Hold on. Hail Mary, Mother Jesus. Blessed be the womb. Okay, let's go. Do I know any tithers who? Um, have money problems? Yes. Ah, <laughs> did Dad? Did you, hold on, hold on. I ain't gonna leave me around. I'm gonna just continue. Okay, and and let me tell you why. Tell me, please. I'm, I'm because I'm, the promises of God are received by faith. Wow. And if a person. Why are you going wild because that's your dad? <laughs> if I had said that, you'd be like, no, Elder Jones, no, no, you wrong, sir. No, man, Walt, you wrong, dude. But because that's your dad, you wild on him. I, I'm so tired of you spiritual sons. <laughs> I'm tired of y'all. William, I need you to call me, man. Come on the show. Wow. <laughs> I just, I just, I don't like this show. I don't like this show. It's tithing based on fear. And they are not in expectation mm -hmm. that their faith, nothing's going to happen. There he is. There he is. I'm here. Uh, I know <laughs> I know you was gonna bring that up. The money was used because you could not carry the tithe uh to a place where God was gonna show you, so you had to sell. Your tithes and collect money. Now the money in your hand ain't tithes anymore. You understand? Oh, that's uh, D. Whitley. Man, this is Doc D. Whitley. Thank you, man. I don't, your thing ain't showing up for some reason. And then you went to the festival place and exchanged the money back to a tithe. <laughs> Do you understand? So it was never money. Money was used as an exchange. To do something with tithes. Money wasn't the tithes. Money was used as an exchange for tithes. Hope that makes sense. 
let's continue because uh, Brother Rudolph is here. I, I don't know. I didn't think about my hot spot. I had we know, a, we know you're old, Rudy. It's okay. You I Jocelyn know. told you. We know Jocelyn told you what to do. It's okay. You made yeah. it. You know, I had a, I had a, a brother uh, in a, in our church who was with me way back when, and he would tithe faithfully. Wow! And he had money, but he would say out of his mouth, "Tithe ain't never blessed me. Tithe ain't never. I'm gonna give it, but it ain't never blessed me." And I said, "You know, I would tell him, you have what you say. Mm. You have what you say." You went from wild to mmm. <laughs> Why am I watching this? And so years ago, you know, uh, when I'm learning, because before I could teach this. How do you have what you say? Huh? If that was that easy, what's the, what's the, I can be wealthy today if I have what I say. Yes. I had to have some questions answered. Wow. And so... Um, you know, I was raised that you can't ask God questions. Me too. Old school. Old spirit told me if you can ask God a question, He can't answer. He can't be God. Come on, Kev. I asked God the a lot of these are testimonies void of Scripture. Yeah, they are pastors. It's difficult to find scriptures to to you know easy to do testimonials and use emotional stories. Uh, to tell, to try to convince the weak and the feeble-minded. Question: Why is brother so and so love the Lord and his mm -hmm. needs not met? Wow! Mm -hmm. So in church, grew. I mean, every time church is open, they there, and yet their needs not met. Yes. And here is what the Lord told me. He said to me, "Then that's when I got the revelation. The promises of God are received by I faith. Received by faith, and it's there in the Scripture." You get saved by faith. You get healed by faith. Hebrews 11 and 33 mm -hmm. says they receive the promises by faith. Wow. The faith comes by hearing and, and hearing. hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So if the word of God and that promise is never taught and the person never hears, now they may hear about salvation. They may hear about holiness. They may hear about faithfulness, but until they hear the word of God on giving and receiving, sowing and reaping, mm -hmm. they will not have faith for it. Uh, yeah, but you can't put giving and receiving with tithe and put them in one bucket and then tell the people who not tithing, you ain't doing it even though they're giving. They're giving. They're not calling it a tithe. You are misleading the people in a great way, Bishop. Wow. Well, even though. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> oh, it is the will of God for them. <laughs> they will not have faith for it because they have not heard and have not intentionally released their faith. So that's that's the bottom line is we're wow. going to teach it so people can hear it. And when they hear it, faith will come. Wow. And the faith comes and they do it in expectation. Now you get results. Wow. Dad, you know, I, I, first of all, I'm glad I was able to, able to, 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 I don't know why I didn't think about my hot spot before. Maybe it's like Murphy said, I'm old. But I think, you know, so much can be and needs to be said because, first of all, people who try to argue about tithing from a perspective of the law is erroneous because tithing was incorporated into the law but not introduced in the law right so that that's erroneous that part i think uh, you know an, another reality is there's so many misgivings about tithing because prosperity not has been taught but has been abused yes, sir. in teaching yes sir mm -hmm. and, and because prosperity has been abused okay now prosperity or the blessings of God um, are frowned upon by, by so many. Okay. Um, and so people are afraid to talk about prosperity or blessings because of the abusive teaching that mm -hmm. has gone forward. Mm -hmm. For me, mm -hmm. okay. tithing, I obligate myself to obedience out of gratitude 
for Jesus Christ who destroyed the law and the curse. Okay. So to say that I we give by grace to me is not a contradiction of giving the tithe huh? because I give, I obligate myself to uh -huh. give okay. yes. because I am grateful for the grace of God. Okay. Yes. And I understand that what releases the hand of God is when I make the choice uh, to be obedient and I make the choice to understand the grace of God. So, mm -hmm. And all the people that want to argue about the tithe was a grain and the tithe was a this. You're absolutely they're right. But okay. you, you got to get beyond that uh -huh. um, and and come out of the hermeneutic of that biblical day and deal with it in this day. OK, OK, yeah. OK. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Rudolph so far. Uh, which one of these ones is not like the other? I think it's Rudolph is the one. Okay. Yeah. Rudolph <laughs> Jr. So far, I'm with you. But the fact that you part of the four, I'm suspicious. I, I, I think if, if people can get beyond <laughs> some of the erroneous teaching against tithing, you can't teach against tithing from the law because it was incorporated in the law mm -hmm. but right. not introduced in the law Correct. and you can't mm -hmm. you can't talk against tithing because we're new testament mm -hmm. because if we're going to talk against things that were introduced in the old testament because we're new testament then there's a whole lot of sin we could be doing <laughs> <laughs> is, is that it Surely there's more. Oh, no. oh most definitely. I think. I okay, think, so I think so there is more. That's that's crystal clear. No, it wasn't. And again, <laughs> no, he left me hanging. I, I, he was he was right there. He was close. He he he. It's like a get well smart. He missed me by that much. <laughs> okay, I was almost there. Can we talk? <laughs> it's going to be a matter of the heart. A matter of your heart. If you. If you want to try to find a justifiable call, a reason not to uh, be a giver, give tithes, give offerings, mm -hmm. give support, then you're going to do that. That's right. just the that's just the way it is. You don't need a controversy. You just in your mind. I'm not going to do it. Fine. And these preachers, you have all, your these preachers, all they want is your money. Well, you know, you're going to say that, but that's that's it. Has it been abused? Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. My God. As it has, has it has been abused? Giving mm -hmm. it, it has been ab abused, mm -hmm. but just because there's an abuse, doesn't mean that the genuine and the authentic is not so. Right. And so you know, yeah. Um, um, I've, I've seen guys abuse it. I've seen you know, but you know they're gonna have to answer to God for that. Dad, can I ask a question? Sure. Why is it? <sighs> That, that that we are even having this big discussion and this big thing about tithing when, when in reality we, liberality ought to be what, what the ki kingdom giving ought to be about anyway you know right. I, I said in the statement I'm making tomorrow at church uh, I have a foundation to my house I don't sleep on my foundation I, I don't eat from my foundation I eat in my kitchen I sleep in my bedroom. But if I did not have that foundation, then none of those would be possible. That my foundation is not my goal. It is just the starting point. And I feel like the starting point. So many people are getting lost in the meaningless minutia of of the weeds of tithing. And when in reality it, it as as kingdom and as people of grace and as people uh, who are believers, wow. liber liberality. Right. It, like, why are they getting caught up in the weeds of that? I'm waiting for your meat. I'm waiting for your M-E-A-T. There's, there's uh, Brother Rudolph Jr., I'm waiting for the meat of your message because it's still you meshing. You, you're, you're, you are introducing your point. Everything you've said so far up to this point is an introduction. 
It is a salutation. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna need you to get back on the go back on the telephone. <laughs> if if we are trying to be liberal and we're trying which we want to be blessed to be a blessing. Right. We want to be liberal to be a blessing. Yes, it's word salad. There's no meat there. It's a portobello. Port what's it called, that thing? It's a, it's a mushroom sandwich. And if people begin to practice that liberality, it, it almost feels as if people want to have this conversation about tithing because they don't really want to have a conversation about giving. Wow. Okay. okay. I, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not arguing the point at all. The whole <laughs> point of liberality, that's where really God wants you. Right. Uh, to uh, Dr. Dollar's credit, he, that's, that's what he was saying. He's saying, let's, let's go. But, but you cannot, you cannot uh, <laughs> deny the tithe in burger. that same light. That is my foundation. <laughs> Right. So I should not be going less than that. Right. It was never the tithe only. I'm sorry, y'all. That's the last comment. It's an impossible burger. <laughs> that, thing, that thing got me so tickled. <laughs> under the law, when I get an understanding of God's uh, intent <laughs> and his desire, it was always tithes and cracking me up. Crack always tithe. And often, so if I'm just you know struggling to give that ten percent, that's all God. I haven't gotten there. I haven't gotten there because it's tithes and offerings. And yeah, and so you know, years ago, <laughs> my God, that's in the late seventies or mid seventies when I started tithing. I I gave God. A, uh, I was making sixty five dollars a week. My God, my God, <laughs> minimum wage job, sixty five dollars a week. Jesus. And I didn't have enough. I ain't have enough to make. Payday was depressing. Payday was depressing because when I got my check, it was all old out. It was already spent. It was all spent. And when I asked this guy about borrowing some money from him, and and uh, I didn't know how I was gonna pay him back. I just, that's, you know, I just needed, I just need. Question here: Who change uh, food money? Tithe from food money. Who give permission for anyone to collect tithes other than the Levi priest host? Please let them answer my question. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's pre-recorded. I don't know what's going to happen, Sean. The whole something. You understand? And uh, well, and he said, Ira, if you're tithe, God will bless you. Well, I'd been around church, and I'd heard of tithing, but I, I wasn't a tithe. And then he told me he wasn't doing it. But I read it for myself. And when I could see that in the word of God. Where did you read it, though? See, here, here, here is where I got you, okay? You said that God said in the word, if you do it, he'll bless you. But where are you getting ready to take us to Malachi? Because if you take us to Malachi, then everything you said in your introduction is thrown out of the window. Because that's, Malachi is under the law. So if you're talking about a custom, then, God, then, then you need to say custom. Did God say in the custom that if you do this, he'll bless you? Did he say that? Because you made it scripture that he was speaking to us by what you just said. Dad, that if I gave tithe and an offering, I'd be blessed. I gave tithe God a five, a ten dollar, I mean a six dollars and fifty cent tithe and a five dollar offering. And I was, I'm telling you, I was expecting a move of God. The simple faith that Peter had when he said, "Nevertheless, at Thy word." I didn't have strategic, I didn't have a systematic <laughs> faith. I didn't know how to talk the word of God. And I didn't know how to do I know how to do that. All I knew was God said, if I would do it, he would bless me. Now, God, thank me. <laughs> I still thought I was under the curse. <laughs> I didn't have the revelation that, that, that I had been redeemed from the curse. I didn't have that revelation. But I wasn't tired out of fear of the curse. I was tithing because I saw God would bless me. I would give my tithe and my offering, and I saw God come through. YP, you're mighty quiet. Yeah, YP. Oh, I'm just processing everything. Why are you on the show? <laughs> Conversations like these are very challenging because what it really reveals is the immaturity 
that is around us and and, and the right. inability to have a, a mature dialogue. People just don't know how to have mature conversation. It's always combative, attacking, as opposed to considering. And I think for me, I've actually said, first of all, let me make it clear. I think Dr. Dollar is one of the greatest blessings to the body of Christ and his grace teachings, et cetera. He's done such a great job. Yeah. But I don't know very many people that I agree with on everything 100% in life. Right. Um, that's just life. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. We stick with scripture. And, and I think, too, I would say this to a lot of you because we've seen I've seen I'm kind of reading. I'm seeing a lot in this lifetime. If you try to humanize everything, you won't understand spiritual matters. And, and a lot of people are trying to humanize spiritual matters. And so they'll say things like God doesn't need money because they're humanizing a spiritual matter. And right. it's challenging to have a conversation that does have spiritual premise with a person that can only see it through a carnal mind or a carnal lens. You may have to use that, say that differently, humanize spiritual matter. That's all we can do with spiritual matters is humanize it. You may, you may have to use another phrase because that, that, didn't, that didn't add up too, too good. And I know basic math and that wasn't basic math. So for me, it is more so just listening and learning. Um, I'm always open. I, that's why I always tell y'all, whenever y'all speak, I listen to y'all because I want to hear what you have to say. I think, uh, how do you just reconcile those who see everything through the lens of human thinking when they rationalize everything? Mm -hmm. When they're like, oh, they just want your money. Oh, they, just, they can't see there is a spiritual aspect to it, that the faith walk is not natural. Can you just talk right. about it? Well, I, I thank you. I, I love y'all's questions because y'all answered when y'all asked. <laughs> And and that's it, you know. I've got to I've got to renew my mind, and the renewing of the mind is more than scripture memorization. It's yep. about looking at things from a spiritual perspective. Yep. If I want to just take everything and look at it from a natural perspective, then none of it makes sense. None of the Bible makes sense. I'm praying to a God that I cannot see, and I'm praying to a God that I have never heard His voice. And you say, I'm going to a place of heaven. And I don't know anybody who has gone there and come back and tell me about it. So if I'm going to look at everything through a natural lens, none of it makes sense. None of it. Come on, Cortez. And that's uh, in the same light of, uh, I think, in 1700, the microscope was, uh, was uh, invented. Before the microscope was invented, then everybody was looking at everything through a natural lens, mm -hmm. through their natural eyes. But once the microscope was invented, now they could see what they could not see with their natural eyes, because that was a whole nother uh, microbiological uh, biological world out there. So, so it is with the scripture. The scripture opens unto me spiritual things. Now I can choose not to look at life through the lens of the spirit of God, through the word of God. I can choose to do that. And I'm going to say whatever I want to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like most people. I, my, I, in my opinion. And when they do that, I go, well, no, I'm not interested in that. Antonio, back in. <laughs> wow. And I just believe. Okay? Oh. But I'm looking at life through the lens <laughs> of the scriptures, the word of God. And the Bible says there is safety in the multitude. In the of multitude. So uh, on issues where there is some what controversy, I think we need to have the multitude of counsel. And then that is what we have to rest in. It's been 40 minutes <clears throat> and I have not heard any text. No Bible was opened no hermeneutical digging exegetically just just no o i c a it's just it's just all testimonials and happenstance and hearsay and feelings i mean not none and i'm just dis i'm disappointed at this Praise because when doctors come together they talk about medical stuff when lawyers come together if these were four lawyers they'll be talking about legal issues They'll be talking about the laws of their territories. They'll even bring up the, the Constitution. All right. They'll be talking about uh, the state's attorneys and all this stuff. They'll be they'll be digging deep into case studies and what have you. 
All right. And these men are bringing up some case studies, but at least the lawyers are bringing up case studies and tell you what the law says. Uh, Section five, nine, eight, uh, third paragraph says blah, 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 blah. After they give a case study in the the study of Roe versus Wade and blah, blah, blah. These men of God who are supposed to be experts in the word because you pastors, you're not supposed to be novice. All right. So the opposite of novice is what, y'all? Can you tell me? (laughs) So first Timothy chapter three. So how could you have four men who are not novice and not bring up the law of the scriptures? And I ain't talking about Mosaic either. (laughs) Dad, can you talk to us a little bit about the Uh, purpose of of biblical giving? Because I think another reason there's, (laughs) there's so much not only confusion, but anger and consternation around this is because once again of the erroneous teaching from who give to get money (laughs) and god watch out rudolph you're talking about somebody above you here's a story (laughs) wait hold on hold on (laughs) watch out man (laughs) he right there (laughs) Of a man named Hillard. <laughs> Be careful, man. The man can see you. That's that's, <laughs> that's not that's no in the Bible. That you you gonna get money. Uh, you know there are things I need money can't buy. Uh, but what is the real purpose? Because I think we have made so many principles in the Bible, including giving, selfish. There is this kind of me theology and me spirituality that is taught so much in churches now you know turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor god's gonna get my enemies i turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor i'm gonna get this in seven days and there's so much meism and i that's hiller dude that's hiller did you watch uh the offering time of uh <laughs> Uh, here in Chicago, Hillard came here for a grand opening. And he said the exact same words, Brother Rudolph Jr. <laughs> Hillard is the man you bring in to collect your offerings. He right there. He can see and hear you. I think we have really lost. We Look at his face. He's upset in the spirit. <laughs> included that with giving now that with you know people are being taught they give because because and they look for a blessing (laughs) as if you're going to bargain with god or as if god is some paymaster or or you know some genie when in reality biblical giving is first for us to bless others wow (laughs) wow That man just preached the gospel in that 15 second bit. Did you not hear what he said? (laughs) He he said what I've been saying all week. And it's to bless others. Did I not say? Rudolph, you are the smartest kid on this block. And you don't even realize that you speaking against the group you are the enemy in the camp of these three men you just preached the gospel and you don't even know it <laughs> that was amazing i'm joining your church this sunday i'm gonna be the doc would, would you talk to us a little bit about that? there's there's uh when you look at scripture there's there are several reasons for I call it kingdom giving. I give into the kingdom of God he gonna back first pedal. because it honors God. It honors him. <clears throat> I give into the kingdom of God for the work of God. The work of God has to be financed, and that's God's plan for financing mm-hmm. okay. what the Bible calls the good works. All right. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm with you. But I also give because of the returned blessing that's promised. Yes, right. sir. Okay. And that's not and selfish. That's right. just the right. power. That's just yep. the promise in the word. I teach that. Yes. Not everybody else. You can leave the promise on the table. Yeah. But I took it. Mm-hmm. I <laughs> took it that God God would bless me. Yep. Mm-hmm. And 
in in uh, Second Corinthians chapter nine, he uh, says, "Come on, that He will make all grace abound come toward on. you, yes, sir. All grace. that you would always have come all on. sufficiency Dad. in all things." Preach it, Daddy. <laughs> now that's so comprehensive that yes, because of my giving, mm -hmm. God is going to favor me. Mm -hmm. I, wow. He will raise up others who will use their power, mm -hmm. their ability, and their influence to help me. Watch this. I believe it and I expect it. Mm. Favor comes before money. Mm. Favor comes before money. Whoa. <laughs> and so, but I'm in faith for it. I'm in faith for God to talk to somebody about blessing me. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, um, uh, I, you know, I should, I should be a giver to bless the kingdom of, I mean, to bless God, to honor God. Honor God. Bless the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. If uh -huh. I read, so the work of God can go forward. How we do that? I should give also, you know, with the expectation yeah. of God blessing me. Okay. Watch this. Yeah. And then I should be a giver yeah. because I am blessed to be a blessing. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, I get all of that. I do that. The bunkers do that. But who are you giving to? And the whole giving cycle doesn't stop when I get my return. It, it, it doesn't stop. I must then show that I'm a good steward of it so I can demonstrate to God I can be trusted with more. Yes. Oh, y'all, the audio is off a little bit, so bear with it. Sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and so, yes, sir. You know, you know, I'm looking at some of the comments. And so the whole comment is to bring clarity to the giving principle in Scripture. Hold on, y'all. I got to put this in the freezer because it's it's getting lukewarm and I won't drink it. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Nobody's trying to roast Dr. Dollar. No. Nobody's trying to do that. Well, 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 it started the conversation, but the conversation that we need to have is to bring clarity to it. Right. How do we give? Uh -huh. What is my expectation of giving? Uh -huh. right. Got it? Yes. And, and, and scripturally, does God expect me to give? Yes, he does. Now, when you want to look at the matrix of giving, i got to look at the matrix that God established in the Old Testament. He established it for mm -hmm. the time. But then I look at the metric for the offering. The offering, he says, as I purpose in my heart. If I sow sparingly, yeah. I will reap. Don't reap sparingly. If I sow bountifully, I, I will reap bountifully. And and I and I gotta tell you, there 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 is a breakthrough that happens when you give sacrificially. I'm a living witness based on the principle. Now, people have seen my little raggedy rundown building. I'm in a little raggedy rundown building, and God said, sow a seed. There it is. They put it up there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm in I'm in this little raggedy rundown building. I'm full time. I don't have I don't have uh, 50 members. And God asked me for a $10,000 seed. Wow. That's in 1980. Now I'm already a tither. I'm already a tither. I'm already giving offerings. Mm -hmm. But now God asked me to sow a seed. And, and, and I heard the voice of God. I've been hearing the voice of God since I was a little kid. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I know the voice of God. I all right. <sighs> you all are, you keep talking about seed. All right. Be careful with the word seed, first of all. All right. And giving an offering. Okay, fine. When y'all start talking about giving $10,000, $1,000 here and there for churches, you're not giving to God. Unless that church is taking that money. I'm out of breath, y'all. I had to go upstairs. Unless God is taking that money, the church that is taking that money and giving it to the poor or paying a salary according to 1 Timothy chapter 5 and 18. Muzzle not the ox, which treaded out the corn. That's given to God. And when you're giving to the poor, you got a, a, a food pantry, stuff like that. Then yeah, if your $10,000 gift was given to that church and that church is uh, distributing out to the neighborhood, you gave to God. But if it's going to mortgages and lights and gas and water and card notes and stuff like that, sorry. No, sir. I told God, I don't have $10,000. He said, you can get it. Okay? 
I'm not telling anybody, let me say this, I'm not telling anybody to do this. I am just giving my testimony. So God said to me that you have it in the equity in your house. All right. I, I said we need to talk to Bridget. I need, talk to to Bridget. I need to fast for this. So that blessings then flow into their life because they are being a blessing with what God has blessed them with. I need to fast for There would be less suspicion and less conversation. All right. Fast I'm forward. giving because I'm in relationship with Jesus and I know that this is how God has ordained to bless me in the earth. And I think that's why there's so much controversy around this because the enemy does not want us to be blessed. He doesn't yeah, I, want I, you in a position, Rudy, where you have more than what you need and enough to give away and then I'm, something I'm, left I'm over not, to put I'm not arguing that, Murph. My point mm -hmm. is you cannot manipulate God. Right, that's the right. I'm Right. When I say God is a paymaster, you cannot manipulate God. Right. You can't. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot give because you want money. Right. Whoa. There's an enemy in the camp. I can't. I can't believe Rudolph M. Jr. is saying what he's saying over and over again in front of these brothers. Boldly, he telling the truth in front of these brothers. Be silent, and then let these brothers tiptoe through the two lips, and then it goes back to him, and he keeps staying true to to the, the whole purpose of giving. Yet he's a part of this group here, and but it is a guilt by association because you have not really gone against what these. And again, no scripture has been brought up yet. All right. And so, Rudolph, I like you. I really like you. But I'm, I'm just confused by why was you brought on the show? Are you brought on the show as the antithesis of these three men's points? Then if that's the case, bravo. Bra bra bravo. But it looked like you're trying to be the the mediator between the two. You are the, the paraclete. <laughs> if you're not giving from your heart and right. if you're not giving from relationship. Because it's a heart with God, with God through Jesus Christ. Right. You cannot manipulate God. Right. That, and that, he, that and he cannot won't happen. Played. No, that God's sovereignty does not become impotent. But you talking against the apostle. Apostle says when you give me to God with the expectation of getting something back. He said that if you give money, then God's going to give you money back. You just said, Rudolph, that you can't do that. Did y'all hear that in front of my face? In the face of your cash. He said face. Wow. <laughs> so, so, so that's what I mean. You can't manipulate. Right. There has been... There's been pulpit manipulation uh -huh. about what giving does for you without including in that it's a faith walk. It's a relationship <laughs> with God. Right. It's hard. It's that's what I mean by that. And I, I think that's what this whole controversy was about, because when I'm in relationship with God, I completely trust God with everything, including my money. When I'm yes. in relationship with God, I completely trust God. And Dad, while you were talking, I, I was thinking about, mm -hmm. I think I, I kind of got old school Baptist for a minute. It might be the Virginia Union in me, Rudy. It's this whole law of first mention thing. And mm -hmm. uh, when you go back to Genesis chapter 14, this is where we first see the tithe coming into uh, scripture, where here it is, what is it, uh, 14 and 21, or 14 and 20, where Abram gives to Melchizedek a tenth of everything. And that's where we see the tithe being introduced in scripture. And Rudy, you said it earlier, at this point, there was no law. So it was a heart issue. It was an honor issue. It was, it was an issue of of gratitude that because of what God has done, I've got to give something back. And I think we got to go back 
to mm -hmm. this. When people say, oh, it was Old Testament, or oh, it's not New Testament, well, Jesus would have never mentioned it. We're not even having that argument. Let's just go back to where it was introduced that the tithe came out of a heart of gratitude for what God had done. And I think if we can keep it right there, Dad, I think we can keep well, it clear. I think you keep it clear, but you cannot deny that God. every time God asks me for something, he promises a return. Uh-oh. I don't think y'all saw what just happened. Apostle Ivy Hillett has been pressed. <laughs> He's been pressed. He, he was just pressed. And now he's pressing back. The guy below him, he's speaking directly to the man up under him. <laughs> Every time. Every time. I, I cannot, I cannot disavow that. I, I cannot say that when I give, I should not be expecting. Right. Because he promised me. So I am giving with the expectation. I'm giving because this is the system that God set up for his kingdom to be uh, to taken care of. It's God's way to prosper me. Yes. Because every time he asks me to give, he, yes. he says it's a law. Give and it shall be given yeah, unto man. you. That's mm -hmm. the law of sowing. If I sow, I am going to reap. Mm -hmm. well, I am not going to minimize that part of it. Oh, man, I got to pass. Because forward. of that. Lord, I thank you for the, for the blessing. I got a fast point. As, as Apostle said, there if there's 30 pastors in a city, 25 of them really do have the right intentions. The problem is when the five mess up, they make the news. So yeah. now everybody just thinks all oh, pastors want your money. When there are many pastors that work jobs, they work two, three jobs, and they still go to church and they serve the people. Yeah. There's bivocational pastors. So that's not a legitimate argument. But yeah. I see it, if you try to see this through a carnal mind, you're going to always look for a person to attack. And Bishop McKissick, I, I agree with you 100%. Most people that are arguing about whether or not we should give, don't give at all. And right. I, I know I know that for a fact. No, but when sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. You got to be, again, you got to be very keen on what you're saying here. Are you talking tithe or are you talking offerings? We are going against you tithe payers because you have abused the teaching of tithing and try to put some kind of curse over us. And then if you didn't curse us, you put us under the custom of tithing and told us we have to do that, even though that's not under the law. But you said you, you need to do it because then that's your way of paying for protection and getting more money from God. And then God's going to do this for you, heal your mother of cancer, all kinds of stuff. Y'all right, are sending a really diluted teaching of tithing. So y'all are doing that. So the people who are talking against your push on tithing, many of them do give. But you don't think they're giving enough. Why? Because you don't trust Y'all hear me here. You hear me, hear me, hear me. These men of God do not trust you to just give an offering to take care of the church. You're not trusted. So they have to browbeat and beat you up with the tithing thing because they figure this makes no sense to anybody out there on the street. The world laughs at us because you walk in church with two envelopes. All right. They're going to give you the two envelopes, but you know what I mean. You walk in, you leave the house with this amount of dollars in the right hand, this amount of dollars in the left hand. And you go into the same building and put this amount of dollars over here and this amount of dollars over there. All right. What happens at most churches is the two envelopes get counted in the back. All of the money is put in one pot. And all of it is this then goes to the same distribution. Same distribution. Many churches do not take the tithe and allot it to the way it was supposed to have been allotted. No. They take the tithe and the offerings that y'all gave and put it all on the light bill, all on the gas bill, all on the mortgage. It doesn't go here, then go here. No. You come in there to go here, go here. With your money, once they get into the pot, it goes to the same thing. It's kind of stupid to me. So when you listen for someone, the world look at y'all. They said, "What the heck?" <laughs> Almost said it. Are these people doing? This makes no sense to me. That's why God says you're robbing me in tithe, food, 
offering money. The money, the offering, takes care of the upkeep of the temple. Who upkept it? Huh? How do you know? I mean, where, where did the upkeep come from? It had to be financed. The temple had to be financed. In walked the temple tax. Okay? The, the, the tithe was the food that fed the workers. The, 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 the Levites and the priests. That was the way it was in the temple. So, you all coming in there with money and money. <laughs> it's, it's the most serious thing. <laughs> money and money. Two different envelopes. And you do that because you you want the accounting department to make sure they they, they allotted that that's a tithe and that's an offering. And then when they get through allotting what, how much was the tithe, how much was an offering, it all goes into the same bucket to pay the same bill. It makes no accounting sense. <laughs> it makes no accounting sense at all. And you've been manipulated to do that because they don't trust you to give enough to take care of the church. Oh my God, today. The heart is generous. You don't have an argument about finances. It's a small, right. Jesus called it a small thing. He said, if you can't handle the wealth of this world, who can trust you with the true riches of heaven? This is a small thing. Mammon is a demonic principality that has wrapped up the minds of people to worship money. Mm -hmm. And it's not to be worshiped. It is a tool that we use in the kingdom for advancement. And the blessing of the Lord is on those who walk in obedience. So I don't struggle with the tithe. Or with the offering, it doesn't bother me at all. But I just hope that we can grow to a place where we, the body, can converse without trying to create conversion. We just need to do conversation and bring people into enlightenment. Wow. Well, and I, I think that's that's that's. Very <clears throat> if I'm making an investment with my tithes, why are my investments yielding a return? Your investment with your tithe will never reap a return if your your tithe is going to a church to pay its bills. No, it will never be a return. That is nothing in the scripture that says it's going to ever be a return. Your tithe, if it went to paying the salary to someone who has preached the gospel, who is a teacher of the word, 1 Timothy 5 and 18, or if your tithe is going to the poor, God says, if you give to them, then you were lending to me, and then that is a great investment. Other than that, you just giving your money away because you want to help some church keep their lights on. That's all you're doing, and God never uh, promised you that he'd bless you for doing that. Why? Because he never told them to be that church. <laughs> very, very well said. Uh -oh. Strong. Uh, that, you know, uh, tomorrow, those who, because, uh, you know, tomorrow is a big giving day. It's, it ain't the only giving day. You can give all during the week if you desire. Mm -hmm. Okay, they wrapping it up, y'all. Tomorrow, I believe, I'm and I'm in down. faith for, Record giving in the body of Christ. Record giving. Because I mean, this has brought that principle to the forefront in the minds of a. No, sir. You're going to see a depleting of giving tomorrow. <laughs> a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I'm believing that every pastor will stand in faith, believing that this is God's plan to bless the people. Yes. I had, uh, I've had the. Uh, Several pastors asked me about receiving offerings. All right. I think it's disingenuous to think that we bring uh, crops to church because our ec economy is based on cash. They live in agricultural system. Uh, is that you, uh, Dr. Sidney? They had a lot of cash back then. Was that you, Sidney? How many times have I done this show where I told you all, all of the cash that they had? My fact... In another minute or so, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you the cash again. You said, yes, that's you. How much cash was in the Bible? Can somebody in the comment section give me a name of some type of monetary um, uh, means, both Old and New Testament? Hmm? Okay, you said you didn't, they did not have cash. Okay, but you said they live in the agricultural. We too live in the agricultural. Where do you think your, your food come from? Huh? <laughs> Where your food come from? When you down, when you driving down the highway, you see all those trucks. There's a lot of food in them trucks. When I lived in South Dakota, all I saw was, was buffalo and antelope and deer and fields and fields of corn. <laughs> 
come on, man, don't say we, don't, we live in an agricultural system. They, you're looking at America. What about around the world? The Middle East still live very agriculturally. Denarius, shekel, okay, silver. Come on, Brother Charles is here. Good to see you, sir. Denarius, all right. Man, the coin in the fish's mouth, the the the, the widow's mite, <laughs> all right, the drag dragma, which was the temple tax. It's, it's just a whole lot of money in the Bible, both old and new. <laughs> so, of course, we don't want a bunch of food coming in the church because y'all have been taught wrong and y'all been taught to fear. All right. It's, it's, it's really sad. And uh, they want to know well, how you do that. I said, first of all, you have to have a conviction that this is God's plan to bless the people. To bless the people. If you if you don't have that conviction, <laughs> I know what you're yeah. saying, Doc. You think any other way, <laughs> you're going to be bashful <laughs> I'm, and timid. At I'm that pushing moment. you, Doc. I'm pushing yeah. you. Doc. This is God's plan to bless the people. It is. And uh, I believe in tomorrow we're going to have record giving in the body of Christ. Yes, Lord. And for it, I am believing for an accelerated manifestation. Let me fast forward. Right. right. Blessed to be a blessing. All right. When I read right. Luke 6, 38 years ago, when we start wrapping up, give it, it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men uh -huh. give into your bosom. I saw uh -huh. men yeah. that for people in the earth to be blessed by God, yeah. he has to funnel it through the hands of somebody. Of okay. a man. And we yes, said, God, make us the man. God, make us the person. Man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, this was great. This was great. That, I mean, no. it's... It was not it's that so needed, and a, a, as we can see from, I want to hear Rudolph's last words. All of the comments tonight, as you said, some people, you know, this is the only platform where they can get attention, so they have to come on, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you overlook it, and you, you know, make of yourself no reputation, um, and it's it's just sad. But as Murphy said. I, you know, I didn't make any comments on social media at all. Um, I want to talk to the people I pastor. And I'm going to do that tomorrow through video. And yep. we're raising, you know, we're raising $200,000 to bless people going to college. And, you know, we're raising other monies to be a blessing. It's, but it. I've had enough. This was a waste of time. I, 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 I thought that I was going to get something. <laughs> And I did. I get something. I I, I did. I sure got something. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it was. It it's a mess. Let's look at the temple tax. Remember when I read this? I read this to you all a couple days ago. Okay. All right. I thought I erased all of that stuff. Where is that? Where is it? Is it here? Okay. Let's go here. Remember when I showed y'all this here? All this here. This is an article about the temple tax. Remember when I did that? The temple tax was a required of Jewish males over age of 20. Remember I did that? And the money was used for the upkeep and the maintenance of the temple. This here is the offering right here. This is how the temple was maintained through a tax. All right. In Exodus, in 2 Kings, you see in Nehemiah here, the temple tax was paid annually. Annually. Y'all know what annually means, right? Mm hmm Not just during a census. This half shekel as money. Tax wasn't a large sum. It wasn't a large sum of money, but roughly equivalent to two days wages. You understand that? Okay. Shekelim in the Talmud. The temple tax is also mentioned in the New Testament here. All right. I'm going to read that. Matthew chapter 17. Let's see what it says here. Uh, right here. On their arrival in Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax. That's, that is, again, uh, uh, came to Peter and asked him, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? <clears throat> hmm. Yes. Peter answered for Jesus. He does. Then he went into the house. But before he had a chance to speak, Jesus asked him, What do you think, Peter? 
Do kings tax their own people or the people they have conquered? They tax the people they have conquered, Peter replied. Well, then Jesus said the citizens, they're not free. The citizens are the sons. That's what citizens mean. However, we don't want to offend them. So go down to the lake and throw in a line. Open the mouth of the fish, first fish you catch, and you will find a large silver coin. Take it and pay the tax for both of us. Why? Because we don't want to offend these folks because I ain't died yet and I don't want to cause a, a ruckus. I don't want to ruffle nobody's feather right now. But his message was, this is my father's house. I don't have to pay a tax. And you are mine. You disciples, you don't have to pay a tax. This is my, our father's house because we are now sons. The church is making y'all pay a tax in my father's house. I don't think y'all getting it. I don't think y'all understand. And you all accepting it because you don't understand. And I told y'all the first day, the second day that is, I did tithe, I said the church is being ran by a bunch of illiterates. And the illiterates is running the church and you listening to the illiterates as it is being taught as law. And you think that the illiterates are correct even though you have the manual in your own house. Nobody reads the manual. You buy an electronic item, bring it home, and the typical man just puts it together, never open the manual. I can, I can fix this without the manual. Something breaks. Now you got to go to the manual and look in the page that says troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. None of y'all troubleshooting because the church is broke. <laughs> Y'all's churches is broke. And none of you are going home to check the manual and look at the troubleshooting pages, which is from Genesis to Revelation. You don't do it. So you keep going back to church to a broke item. Who buys an item and keep looking at a broke item and never call customer service who manufactured the thing? If I manufactured it, then I know the answer. So y'all need to pick up the phone and operator information. Give me Jesus on the line. Oh, 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 operator. Call the manufacturer because this thing right here is broke. So the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> you don't want the answer. You don't want to hear the answer. Because you've been taught, you've been engineered to believe a thing. You are walking robots when it comes to this system. This cognitive dissonance is a disease that is killing us. So these men have deceived you. Rudolph was the only truth teller on that show. And he rubbed the three of those guys wrong. So, number one, they didn't bring up scripture. They couldn't. It was difficult to bring up scripture. They kept waddling around Abraham paying a tithe to Melchizedek. But they couldn't bring up nothing else but that. They couldn't bring up Malachi because of how the opening was. He says, we don't do the curse with the curse. So Malachi was out of, the, out of the picture. He brought up Hebrews chapter 7 and he isogetically tried to explain that. So there was no Bible credible scripture brought up none none so the rest of that teaching it was an hour long and it was an it was an at least 55 minutes of talking about giving that was it and they meshed tithe with the offering gen gen generosity given they meshed it all in there and they stopped saying tithe for the rest of the teaching. Notice that. 
And it was William Murphy was the one who made the most bold statement tonight. The missing link, goodbye, was Murphy tonight. Because he said he never met a broke tithe pair. That was the lie of the year. That was the lie of the year. He is a pastor with members. And I can guarantee you if he asked to see the books of his tithe paying members, he would have to recant his statement. He won't do it though. He just won't say anything or he will spin it. But if he looked at the books of his tithe payers, I'm not saying all of them, but many of them, I guarantee you, he'd say, oh man, you struggling. That's right. And he got corrected by his own spiritual leader, father that is. And his response was, wow. <laughs> Charles said, he know he lied. His response was, wow. <laughs> wow. That's all he could say. And then I had to say, whoa. <laughs> I've said, I've, I've never thought I'd see so much mess. All right. So let me say something to y'all as I close this down. Don't go nowhere, everybody. Let me see this. Don't miss this part right here. I want to applaud you. I applaud you. I applaud you. Who am I applauding? The many of dozens and dozens of messages I received from my tithing teachings to correct people. Many of you says, I went and studied it for myself in OMG. I slept good all week because of the many of testimonies that came in and says, Thank you, thank you. I knew something was wrong, but I, I needed somebody to help me. I want to applaud you. Thank you for being free. For wanting to be free. I applaud you. Now, stay free, though. Stay free. Because, trust me, today at church, I heard the curse for the curse, too. I heard it loud and clear and I ignored it like I, I ignore any. I just ignored it. And I just I just listened to what I wanted to listen to and I tuned it out, tuned it out. Because I knew Sunday it was going to be all over America that holds curse for the curse. I knew it. Many of you got free. Now whom the son has set free is free indeed. Stay free, please. Alcoholics should never be hanging around the bar. Alcohol, I'm talking former alcoholics, should never be invited to parties where they're serving alcohol. You understand? Don't go to those places. Stay free. Because some of you can't, can't smell alcohol without going back to it. You understand what I'm saying? So some of you who got free this week, you went to church today and uh, there was a pull on you because you heard Malachi and he was like, uh, okay, okay, pastor. You went back. And what's, what do they call it when, a, when somebody is broken free and then they went back to it? Not recidivism. That's, that's usually used with prison. What do you call it when somebody will return back to the bottle? Is it, what is, what is it called? That's what some of y'all did today. I saw it in the spirit. Y'all got the word. You, you said you were free. You went to church today and you went back. Not backslide. What is it? Relapse. Thank you, Charles. Y'all relapsed back into that. Free yourself. I was listening to Brother Charles, Brother James, and another brother today. It was good teaching. It was good teaching. Um... You just have to go. I don't know, Charles. Is that on your wall? I don't know if it's on your wall. I think it's. I know it's on James' wall. They did a in-depth study on tithing right before I went live today. All right. This is 
let me go, let me put his name back up here. Charles does a great teaching. Charles Albert Johnson III does a, do a great teaching. All right, look at that name right there and go to Facebook and it's on his wall and James, I don't, I don't see James here. James Mack is not, not here. Antonio, is it on your wall as well? Blessing to you, Robert. I don't know if it's Antonio O'Neill. I don't know if it's on your wall or not. Okay. If, if all right. But but James, where are you, James? All right. Yeah. Okay, God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for these people who came here to hear this teaching. They understand now, many of them. Others are still going to go against it and go back into that little wall that they hide up under because they think they need you to do something for them as they give money. They, they're trying to find ways to continue to give you money so that they can get all of the things that they need. They got half of the gospel. God help them because they only know half of the gospel. Paul asked the question to these men. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said, we have not even heard of such a thing. Why? Because they were John's disciples. Paul needed to know, get, get them to understand that Jesus is the answer. And once they believe, then the Holy Spirit enters in. The Jews required signs, and so these Jews needed to see something because they were Jews. And the sign of, the, of them speaking in an unknown language caused them to see the sign that the Holy Spirit had come as a gift from Jesus Christ who blew on the disciples. Do you understand? Now they are not just John's disciples. Now they are now true disciples of Jesus Christ. These men of Galatia, I believe it was. This is what's happening here. All right. That I need you all to see. A lot of you been, was, was born and raised to believe under this tithing system of bondage. That you've gotten the half of the gospel because Jesus died on the cross. The centurion soldier pierced him in the side after he took his last breath. Blood and water came out and that was you. And that soldier said, surely this was the son of God. A quake in earth happened. You saw dead bodies coming out of the ground. All kind of signs that they needed. Look over to the temple. There was a veil there. It took a lot of men to put the veil up. And that veil rent in half. And now all of you. And those men in that temple can go in there and go right to the Holy of Holies themselves and go to God for themselves. The tithing system out of Numbers 18 says that if you all go into the tabernacle, you will die. You will die. Only the Levites and the priests were allowed in. You were not. <laughs> you understand? So this erroneous teaching of tithing, if you're going to take some one of it, you're going to, you need to take all of it. If you're going to if you're going to obey one law, you got to obey all of it. If you broke one law, you broke them all. If you're going to take one custom in the Middle East in Bible land, take them all. Do you understand? So if you're not going to do that, then I'm going to need all of you all to shut it down. Shut down this erroneous teaching. Stop misleading the people because God has already judged you for leading these people astray. And these people were walking in your churches and they are feeble minded because they were raised under this teaching. And they don't know that the answer is right in their back pockets. Android and the iPhone got the answer. I showed it to you at the beginning of this, this show here. At the very beginning, I showed you the answer. Many will look at that answer and say, nah, I'm still going to tithe. I don't care what anybody say. Nobody's trying to stop you from tithing. The two questions I got yesterday is, how does the church survive without tithing? 
how have they always survived for uh, many hundreds of years? How have they always survived? Not through no gimmicks. And many churches don't need to do collecting often. Many churches don't need to do no tithing. They are debt free. You think you need it. It is a part of the bondage. You think you need it. Do you understand? Number two, the one was, okay, why can't I just tithe? Because it's my money. My answer to that is, nobody's stopping any of you from tithing your money. You can do whatever you want to do with your tin. Stop coming over to my house and telling me that I'm not doing what you're doing, so now I'm in trouble. That's the only thing that all of us anti-tithers are talking about. Not that you shouldn't give extra to the church, but that you got to stop putting the people in a bondage in bondage and using gimmicks to get them to pay the mortgage. Do you understand now? Because God says, I made this whole earth and the heavens above. What makes you think that I'm going to be dwelling and living in that little house that you made for me? I, will, I don't dwell in houses made by man's hands. You turned around and built a $10 million edifice and then put bondage on the single mothers out there to give and make them give a thousand. Anniversaries come around several times a year and you told these single women to give a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. I've seen two thousand uh, dollar promise. Uh, what y'all call those things? Pledges. That you made these single mothers do and they work, they had to get extra jobs. Some of them went to the payday loans so they can pay a pastor's anniversary fee. I cry every time I see that mess. In a house. Knowing that you got a big mortgage to pay. You can't hardly afford the mortgage, but the pastor has an anniversary. Y'all raised him thousands of dollars, and y'all are struggling to pay the mortgage, even though the pastor is on salary. Because he's too lazy to get him a job and make extra money so he can support his family. So he lived exclusively by the church, and he's barely making it. This is why I get in trouble. Nelson, blessing to you. Thank you so much. I see you. This is why I get in trouble. For telling the truth. And I'm freeing people. And I told y'all, I bite the hand and feed me. I'm a musician of the church. Been a musician for uh, most of my adult life. And the church have been paying me most of my adult life. But I don't, I don't, I don't need to survive off of the church. I'm an entrepreneur. I have different, I have different streams of income that comes in. I will never, ever work exclusively for the church, ever, never. In the history of not never, you will never, ever see me working exclusively for the church to, so that they can pay my bills. No way. I'm talking about a church house playing an organ, a piano, or something like that. No. I work for the bunkers. The bunkers help sustain me because I teach and preach the gospel, and they don't muzzle the ox to tread out the corn. So the bunkers sustain me, plus my books, uh, my travels, my YouTube channel, and all that. That's of course that's obviously through the bunkers. You understand? That sustains me. And if one fall off, the other one picks up. If that fall off, the other one pick up. So the pastor is, is trying to survive under one salary of the church, and if that church should close, he's gonna lose everything. You're not a good steward of your money. So wait a minute, the tithing come in. And what happened to the no room to receive and open up the doors and blah, 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 blah. You're supposed to be, in a sense, well off. I didn't say you got to be rich, but you should be at least well off. But one Sunday where a snow hits Chicago and it's, it's like uh, two feet of snow, the churches in Chicago still do not close the doors. Can y'all put in the comment section? Because I know it's late. Over there on the East Coast, it's, it's after midnight. Can y'all put in the comment section, why is it that many churches in Chicago don't close the doors when it's dangerous to drive the church on us in a snowstorm? Hmm? Can y'all tell me? 
Hmm? I like to know. When I graduate, I don't want to be tied to man. Yes. Amen. Who's that? Daniel. Blessings. Mm -hmm. Huh? Can y'all tell me in the comment section so we can go? Hmm? Why? Jerome, they want that money. It's not so much that they want that money, but tell me why. What? They need that money, Edward. They need it. If your church was established and you said this is God's house and God told me to build this house for him. And one son, you can't afford to shut the doors one Sunday because of a snowstorm. You need to question why that church is open. When you cannot, when you've got tithe payers in that church and you cannot afford one Sunday, a snow day, something's wrong. Something is drastically wrong because you can't trust the people to give online. You got to have a special offering and tithe during your service on Sunday or the people won't give. They won't feel the need to give. They, 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 they're not reminded to give. Now, ain't that about nothing? That you got to have church on Sunday to remind the people to give. Or else, if they don't come to church, they won't give. That's a jacked up corporation. That's a jacked up institution. Jacked up. You need to, you need to question God then. I thought you told us. We, I thought. You, and the pandemic came. And thousands of churches had to close. And they could not reopen. They couldn't. That pandemic shut down churches for, for weeks. And the people wasn't given. Why? Because they wasn't reminded to give. They did not use technology for years. Many of the older pastors said, we don't need Zoom. We don't need Facebook. We don't need YouTube. We're, we're fine. We're fine. Pandemic came. The governor said, shut it all down. They shut it all down. And then the pastors lost contact with their members they suffered financially and i'm i drive up and down roseland in here in chicago and i see churches that never recovered doors still closed and these are storefront churches tithe payers are in there what does that say y'all want to be fooled <laughs> y'all want to be in bondage y'all want to be in bondage I, I just i just never met never met anybody i just never i just i just never i just never understood an institution that operates this way the church is the only institution that i know that operates this way i don't know other no other worldly institution that operates the way the church do a 1.2 trillion dollar industry every year operate like Poor people. All the money. <laughs> a lot of the money go to banks. We are so in trouble. So God, as I was talking to you, I thank you for the knowledge that you've given myself and all these people in the comment section. It's too many to read. I'll read them tomorrow. But tonight I'm going to bed. After a late night snack. <laughs> I love you God. I thank you for your strength. That you've given me. Now I'm done. I've, I've overdone it this week. We're done with tithing. We're done. We're starting afresh tomorrow. For the, for the rest of the year. We'll get back to preaching. Uh, the gospel in other different areas. We did not waste the people's time. We'll go back oh God. And. Get back into scriptures and get back to getting the school back up and going to Sunday School University and getting the bunkers, the material that they need. So, God, I thank you for your strength and your knowledge, your wisdom and your grace. We love you. We give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. 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 
Amen, amen. There was about 550 of you who came today. Thank you. If 400 of you uh, or so left on YouTube, there's a thumbs up button there. If you hit that thumbs up button, can you imagine 400 people hitting the thumbs up button? Can you imagine what this gospel spread all over the world would do to other people who are in bondage? It would be amazing. All right. And can you imagine if another 400 of y'all hit the subscribe button? It's amazing because the average person who watched YouTube content, they're not subscribed to the channel. All right. So some of you just don't even know that you're not even subscribed. So if you hit the, the subscribe button, you subscribe. All right. And then hit the bell notifications and then you'll know that we're live. But I'm not the only one. Many content creators, uh, the average person who watch it are not subscribers. You just y'all didn't know that. <laughs> but that's that is absolutely true. <laughs> OK, people just watch it and then YouTube puts it in the watch thingy okay because you watch one it's gonna it's gonna push it keep pushing it even though you're not subscribed all right i love y'all take care of yourselves and one another um and I pray and ask god for more wisdom as we tackle another subject to, trust me this coming week another thing is going to happen let's pray for the health of our dear brother john gray his wife put up a very disturbing post He's in, the, he's in the ER. He's supposed to be dead based off of what we heard, what we read in her post. And um, it doesn't matter what you feel about a man. You don't want the man to die. I pray for life and health. So let's collectively, the 400 of you are left. Let's pray for the life of John Gray. He is between life and death right now at this hour. So if you all have any kind of humility left, it's not good that no man should perish. So you want them to live. So pray that he live. Amen. All right, y'all. Got to go. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. See y'all. I don't even know. Bye. Hey, thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for having some respect. All right. Thank y'all for having some respect. <laughs> Trust me. I I'm going to get some messages tomorrow and say, you disrespected those men. Hey. It's what you say. <laughs> Bye. Well, good goodbye. 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 Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Sir Walter Jones Show. Goodbye.